If you look at the neuroscience research, the research on how we learn, the top two techniques that have been proven time and time again in research are things called spaced practice and retrieval practice. So we'll go through both of them, but there is something that works better than space practice and retrieval practice. Any guess what that might be? It's called spaced retrieval practice. So you actually do, doing the two together is better than, than either of them on their own. So what you, I mean, it's pretty, that's the beauty of all the different things that I, that I talk about with students, like forming examples or what, something called interleaving, how you actually look at you, like, like if you're learning math, you don't do 20 of the same problems in a row. You do, you mix up the questions and it makes it way harder and you struggle while you're studying, but you're gonna remember the material way better. That's called interleaving. But the whole point is you can use these things to add all these other fancy techniques into them. Um, what, another example of interleaving is back to the baseball example. If you don't, if you know I'm gonna throw you a curveball, you're way more likely to hit it than if you, all you know is I'm gonna throw you a baseball. Might be a fastball, curveball, slider, um, change up, doesn't matter. So that's, you're gonna, it's, you're gonna, you're not gonna do as well. You're not gonna hit as many home runs in practice, but you're gonna be a way better baseball player if I do those kind of things. So there are other techniques. I can't cover every single technique like dual coding and all this, but just so you know, I have scoured the research and these are clearly the two that we should start with. So I have no doubt in my mind they all can help you. So Earl Nightingale, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. So this is like this idea of like being, right? Like, like being a nurse, not just learning the individual skills of, 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 of how to be a nurse. But um, um, this, the, the, the key there is repetition. So practice, practice, practice doesn't, doesn't work on its own, but the reality is you do have to repeat. You have to do things repeatedly if you want to learn them, and that's what space repetition is. Train your mind the way an athlete trains their body. So question is, how many weights do you lift today? If the answer is all of them, you're wrong, but you're doing what students do, right? Like how many late weights am I gonna lift today? I'm gonna lift all of them, right? I'm gonna, this is gonna be my, my one workout session for the year. I'm gonna go lift all the weights and I'm gonna get big and strong and, I'm, and I'll do it again next year. Does that, does that make any sense? Well, that's how people are trying to learn. So you, if you're going to get bigger and stronger and faster, you have to train repeatedly. You have to rest between those training sessions and you have to have a plan. But students don't do that. So cramming is the equivalent of trying to lift all of the weights when you go to the gym. So what exercises are you going to do at the gym today? I'm going to do all of them. And then I'll come back again in, in, in three weeks or four weeks and do the same thing. Now, there might be a tiny bit of value from that, but not very much. So we understand that with our bodies, but your brain is a muscle. That's not really a muscle. It's water and fat. But you, but you get Your brain can be treated like a muscle. We know it can grow. We know it can get bigger and stronger and faster. So treat your brain the same way you treat your body. And that, and that is this idea of having a repetitious plan. So if you continually come back to something with this idea of spacing out the practice, what you're doing is you're building a, I would not want their job, but you're, you're building a scaffolding that you can then put future learning on. If all you're doing is cramming in large chunks for large chunks of time, very, very rarely, very infrequently, you actually, you can't build that scaffold that then you can then build on. So the, another example I gave there is let the paint dry before you start adding other layers of paint, before you start putting hooks on the wall, before you start putting paintings on those hooks. You've got to let the first layers dry first. If you're building, if you're building a concrete wall, you do, you do, you got to let that mortar set. You've got to let, you've got to let the, the first part of the wall dry and set and be a solid foundation for putting layer upon layer on top of it. So if you're not doing that, if you're not letting the paint dry, if you're not letting what you learned seven days ago concretize into your brain, consolidate into your brain, then you can't put anything else on it. So that's the idea of space repetition. Learning a little bit very frequently works way better than trying to cram a bunch of knowledge into your head. This doesn't actually take more time. So I'll give you one more example, and then I'll kind of explain how this actually takes less time. I like to think about your memory like blood sugar. What pops into my head, probably because I teach, is this idea of, so everyone knows we want to have a nice, stable blood sugar. Maybe you've heard about like, you know, high fiber diets, low glycemic in diet, index diets, whatever it is. Diabetics, you, know, you don't want to keep your blood sugar too high or too low. So learning, most students, what they do is cram. So cramming is the equivalent of, of like chugging a soda. You get, you get your blood sugar is going to shoot up, but then what's going to happen? 
It's going to come crashing down. So I, I envision a student that's cramming as having these huge spikes of, of information coming in, but almost all of it disappearing. So it doesn't mean it won't help you with your test. If you need a rush of sugar because you're getting ready to play a sport, maybe this isn't the worst idea. It, it will help you, but that information's going to leave. So one study found that like very high level honors students can ace an exam and fail it three days later. So what happened is they crammed and then lost almost all that information. So space repetition is like having a good healthy diet where your blood, blood sugar is just constantly flowing along, goes up a little bit, down a little bit, but you're constantly maintaining what you're learning too. So you actually can learn and retain more in less time by, by using space repetition. If you tell me that you can only study for six hours for an exam, and your options would be study six hours on Sunday afternoon, study an hour a day for the six days before the test, or study half an hour a day for the 12 days before the test. Which thing would be the most effective? The, long, the, the, the shorter periods of time, for, so 12 30-minute study sessions, we're talking exponentially better. I mean, you could, you could easily make an argument. You would learn and retain three to four times. That's been studied. You easily could learn and retain three to four times more information in the same six hours if you space it out. Because not only, not only are you having more nights of sleep, like you know when your kids say, how many sleeps until this, right? Like how many sleeps do you have between the learning and the test? That will help with consolidating the information. But also anyone can focus, well almost anyone, can focus for 25 or 30 minutes. But, but if you're going to study for six hours, those last couple hours, your brain is so shot anyways that um, you're not going to get any value out of it. So that's what I mean when I kind of, that's why I like that blood sugar analogy. So you have to constantly visit the memory, give your brain time to visit the memory in your subconscious, and then have enough sleep and enough time for the brain, for the brain to consolidate the information. So that's why that same six hours, way more effective if you practice spaced repetition.